Welcome. The following video or audio are the study of the Bible, chapter by chapter, verse by verse of the King James 1611 Bible. Our family welcomes you to our household Bible ministry time. You may watch and listen with us. Our goal has been from Genesis to the book of Revelation. Each chapter by chapter we try. And topical preaching and teaching aids you can find by searching different topics. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needs not to be ashamed, rightly divine the word of truth. Come and appreciate the word of God for our spiritual growth, our development in the word of God by these lessons. Please feel, feel, please feel welcome to upload and share our Bible study with family and friends. Like us, subscribe, write a comment, let us know you heard the message. The video or audio are not copyrighted and should be used and not abused. Thank you. First Thessalonians chapter 2. For yourselves, brethren, saved people, know our entrance in unto you that it was not in vain. When the apostles and missionaries came to them, it wasn't emptiness. It wasn't, you know, worthlessness. It wasn't for a carnival. It wasn't for a show. They came in with the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. But even after that, after we came, we had suffered before and were shamefully entreated, as ye know, at Philippi. Remember uh, Acts 16, where Paul and Silas are in jail? And a Philippian uh, jailer gets saved in his family? We were bold in our God to speak unto you the gospel of God, with much contention. Now we're going to learn through this chapter. They go into Thessalonians. They go into Philippi. They're preaching the gospel. And the gospel is causing people to hate them. They're causing people to dislike them. They're getting troubles and problems. So when somebody says, you know, when you do what you do with the Lord, you know, people don't like it. Thank you. You, you show the Bible is true. For our exhortation was not of deceit. There's many mission, there's many ministers out there for deceit. They deceive the people. Today, Ash Wednesday. You know, if you put a piece of dirt on your forehead, that's supposed to do something. I don't know what. Nor of uncleanness. We came into you guys clean. Nor in guile. We did not purpose. To come into Thessalonica to follow you, to do any wrong, to have, you know, take your money and run. But as we were allowed of God to put in trust with the gospel, God gave us the gospel. God trusted us with the gospel. So it's sent by God, even so we speak. Speak what? The gospel. To lost people, you don't carry on a conversation about how many, how all the animals got in the ark, how uh, Cain got his wife, uh, you know, Jesus, you know. You go to the lost people with the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, and nothing else. You don't go to them about tribulation. You don't give them tribulation movies and books. The gospel, even so, we speak. Not as pleasing men. Now, do you think preaching the gospel pleases men? You have not been in a public ministry. We didn't do it for, for man to be how, how great you are. And yet, today, 2017, there are men that are in pulpits and the people say, Oh, he's so great. He's just so wonderful. We'll even give the church a plaque. By the city because it's a wonderful church how great and respectful are the people something's wrong not as pleasing men but God so when you preach the gospel to lost people pray to God that it pleases him it's not gonna please the people Jesus said marvel not the world hates you no it hated me first which trieth our hearts. Sometimes God will say, why'd you really go that weekend? Why'd you go that day? 
Did you do it for me or did you just do it so somebody can see you and hear you? There's some people who go out with a public ministry because I'm being heard. Or everybody else is doing it. Well, my, my, my school makes me do it part of my grade. That's not for God. That's for the man. There's all kinds of excuses. But there's one true way of a public ministry. When I say public ministry, whatever God has given you, it's for God, not man. For neither at any time use we flattery words. Paul is describing the ministry he had to the Thessalonians. There was no bumblebees and tulips and Easter bunnies and oh, this praise and glory with white pearly teeth. As ye know, nor a cloak of covetousness, we did not come preaching to you for money. And when we preach on the streets, we will put up a fight when somebody wants to give us money. Because we're not there for money. God is witness. Now how's that? You know, you know what Paul just said there? He says, our entire ministry. We will stand before the judgment seat of Christ. And God will prove that you did it right. That's, that's a big statement. That's how assured Paul is of his ministry for Jesus Christ. God will say at the judgment seat of Christ. Well done. Nor of men sought we glory. We didn't do it for the glory of men. We didn't care about the men. We didn't seek any reward of men for this public ministry. Neither of you, the Thessalonians. We didn't do it just for you. We did it because the Bible says, Go ye in all the world and preach the, preach the gospel. To all the creatures. Not man, creatures. Just lost where I was. Nor yet of others. Anybody and anyone. That's almost like a whosoever. We did not preach for any man whosoever, male, female, Roman, Thessalonican, whatever you are. We didn't do it for your glory. We didn't do it for you to like us. When we might have been burdensome as the apostles of Christ. So, verses 2 through 6 describes the ministry work of the apostles. It was for God's glory and it caused great trouble to them. By people and ought to be today too but we were gentle among you now see gentle is different from you know pleasing men flattery words we were loving we were long-suffering we were patient we use the fruit of the Spirit for you we didn't bash your head in we didn't stand on the street with pictures of aborted babies in the womb and all that. We didn't say that girl walking with a cigarette in her mouth. Ah, oh, yeah, that's the film. You have a cigarette in your mouth. Oh, the Bible says thou shalt not have tattoos. Oh, oh that beer. Oh. You, you don't do that. That's not a public ministry. The public ministry is the gospel. And we were gentle. Somebody would come up as, they maybe they have an argument. You, you, Get rid of that argument as quick as possible and get back to the gospel. Somebody come to him and say, hey, what is the gospel? And they would sit down with them with an open Bible and show them. That's the gentleness. Even as a nurse cherish her, cherish her children. And, you know, it's taking care of a child. So being affectionately desirous of you. We were willing to have imparted unto you, not the gospel of God only, but also our own souls, because ye were dear unto... Listen, we didn't only bring the gospel, we brought who we were. We brought that eternal spirit of us into you. 
We put our heart, soul, and mind into you guys. What are you saying? For you remember, brethren, our labor and travail. For labor in night and day, because we would not be chargeable unto any of you. We preach unto you the gospel of God. Paul worked sometimes for a living. As he preached the gospel. He was a tent maker, the Bible says. So when he would come into an area and they would not have money, instead of asking for money, instead of being covetousness, he would go find a job and work and preach the gospel. And his own labor would provide the needs that he needed. And labor and travail. That's physical labor. That's a job. And preaching the gospel. Ye are witnesses. I'll call the Thessalonians unto the judgment seat of Christ as you are witnesses. God is our witness. Verse 5. And the Thessalonians are our witness. It's interesting. And God also. That's twice God is mentioned as a witness. What's God going to be able to witness to you at the judgment seat of Christ, Christian? How holy. You've been holy. That's a big standard right there. Holy is being more than just being good. That's being righteous and justly and unblameable. You know, they were beaten, they were whipped, they were jailed, they were uh, stoned, they were beaten. And yet all of it was not guilty, innocent. They beat them because of not being guilty, but because of the word of God. And behave ourselves among you that believe. They behave themselves. That's everybody in the street ministry. That includes the, the, the elders all the way down to the children. If you don't behave yourself in a public ministry, you're defiling what Paul has said. When you're involved in a public ministry, you are to behave and act like a holy child of God. God so God and the people around you may witness so if somebody does bring an accusation if a trouble does arise it would be amazing for an unsaved person to come up to the police officer and say listen we don't like them here but you know what they're, they're not guilty we'd rather not have them here but you know we had that one time with a police officer with the situation he said, no no they're okay they're not the ones. You can leave them alone. And then we had another time the police officer come up to us. Hey, you know, we're looking for this person. Can you keep your eyes out? Listen, people don't realize our conduct will be judged. And when you're fooling around and, and making a public ministry a playtime and full mockery and all that, the unsaved people say, see you and they see you're not serious about it, then you wonder why they're not serious about it. And as ye know how we exhorted and comforted, so exhort, preach the word, and comforted. Oh, you troubles, you got problems. We can help you. And charge every one of you. Charge. We gave an order. That's what we told you to do. That's what a charge is. We give you an order. As a father does his children. So we are likened to a nurse that takes care of her children. And as a father that takes care of the children. A father is supposed to order his children. That ye would walk worthy of God. So you got to ask yourself. When you're alone and no one else is around you and time is quiet and you have not been busy with the world, you got to say, God, am I worthy of you right now? How is my walk? Lord God, will you come down and wash my feet? Maybe my hands. 
my mind, my ears, whatever it is, who has called you unto his kingdom and glory. So there's a kingdom and a glory coming. What's the kingdom? The millennial kingdom of the Lord Jesus Christ. What's the glory? New Jerusalem. For this cause, all right, preaching, the public ministry and all that, we thank we God without ceasing, not just prayer, thanking God, because when ye received the word of God, which ye heard of us, ye received it not as the word of man, but as it is in truth, the word of God. So our conduct, our manner, resulted in how they received the word of God. So when you got Tom Fuhrer and you're gossiping and having a good old time and all that in your ministry, people are not going to take it as the word of God. They're going to take it as just Tom Fuhrer and fooling around. But when you preach it like you're supposed to and doing what you're supposed to be doing and behaving like you're supposed to be doing, then they will receive that word as the word of God. Which effectually worketh also in you that believe. I see that now. After you're saved, the word of God is supposed to be working in you. It ain't gonna work if you don't read. It's not gonna do anything if you don't study. For ye, brethren, say people, became followers of the churches of God. Not church of God, but churches. There's a church of God out there. That's not the right one. The churches of God. There's all kinds of many churches throughout the world today. Bible believing, Christ honoring, born again, blood bought, baptized right, King James, Bible believing churches. We're all together. Which in Judea, Judea that's back in Israel, are in Christ Jesus. So there are Jews saved. For ye also have suffered. And the Thessalonians have suffered much. Like things of your own countrymen. The Thessalonians. The Thessalonians. Were persecuting the saved Thessalonians. So don't cry baby. Because people make fun of what you're doing for Jesus is going on in Thessalonians to the Thessalonians. Get over it. You already been warned. Like things of your own countrymen, even as they have of the Jews. The Jews have been bothering Paul. Who both killed the Lord Jesus. Wait a minute. Even as they have of the Jews, colon, who both killed the Lord Jesus. So who killed Jesus? Because the Passover night, who had to kill that lamb? The Jews. And Jesus is the lamb of God. And if he's the type of the Passover lamb, who had to kill that Passover lamb? The Egyptians? I draw not. Yes, Jesus Christ laid his life down. But guess who got charged with the murder? Jews. Who said that? Paul. Who killed the Lord Jesus and their own prophets. That would go to the Jewish fathers. The ancestry that Jesus spoke. You killed the prophets. And have persecuted us. And we read that through the book of Acts. From day one of Paul's conversion and preaching, the Jews have been after him. And they please not God. Oh, oh. They are God's people, but when they go against the gospel and the word of God, they're not pleasing God. And are contrary to all men. They are God's people, but during the church age, ones that don't get saved and go against the gospel, and believe me, they're going against the gospel. God is not pleased with them. That Jew who's of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and whatever tribe, they may be circumcised, they may be of the royal blood of Abraham, but if they 
oppose the gospel and oppose Jesus Christ, they're going to the same hill that if Adolf Hitler was lost, they're going to the same hell with Adolf Hitler. Forbidding us to speak to Gentiles that they might be saved. So the Jews were trying to stop the apostles. They're trying to stop the Thessalonians. They are trying to get the word of God not to the Gentiles. When Peter came back after visiting Cornelius, the Bible said they, they contended with him. They just didn't have an argument. Man, they fought. What on earth are you doing good over there? God told me. Oh, okay. They changed. To fill up their sin all the way. The Gentiles want, I mean, the Jews want them Gentiles to keep sinning, keep sinning, and keep sinning, so they get the judgment of God. Because they're dead dogs. This is the same attitude that Jonah had. The, 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 the people of Nineveh repented and got right, and God said, okay, I'm not going to do it. And the Bible records Jonah sits underneath a tree, and he's waiting for God to destroy them. And that book finishes. He's not happy. Jonah is a type of Jew in the church age. I, I want you to destroy them, God. For the wrath is come upon them to the uttermost. Now what is that wrath? John the Baptist says, He that has the Son has eternal life. He that has not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abiding, abiding upon him. That's hell. So don't come to me and tell me you're of a particular blood or a particular family or a particular religion because you're still going to get the wrath of God without Jesus Christ. That's what that verse proves. If there's anybody in the Bible that's anybody ever to be of the Bible, it's the Jews. They are God's people. And yet without Jesus Christ, they're going to burn in hell. And they're going to burn in hell more so if they try to prevent the gospel. So, if you get any opposition, don't be surprised if you find out later on there may be a Jew behind it. Because the Bible just told you they are trying to stop the Gentiles from hearing the gospel. But we, brethren, being taken from you for a short time in presence, not in heart, Endeavored the more abundantly to see your face with great desire. We have to leave you. It's been a short time. But we want to come back to you guys. Wherefore we would have come unto you, even I, Paul, once again. I want to come. But Satan hindered us. You tell me Paul believes in a Satan? And you know what? You, know, you can't say this all the time. Because there's, there's three things. There's God, there's Satan, and there's you. But here Paul is rightfully saying, Satan did not make me do it. And when you study scripture with scripture, God may be involved, Satan may be involved, or you may be doing your own destruction. But Satan hinder. Satan can hinder. And I don't know what Satan's doing. But for whatever reason, I don't know how he's doing it, maybe prison, whatever, he's keeping Paul from the Thessalonians. Now, why would that be? Because the Thessalonians are doing the work of God and he doesn't want Paul there. He doesn't want Paul to encourage him anymore. Man, if Paul went over there, you imagine what kind of fire they would have lit? But what is our hope, or joy, or crown of rejoicing? So what is hope, joy, or rejoicing, a crown? Are not even ye in the presence of our Lord Jesus Christ at his coming? You know what's supposed to make you happy? You know what's supposed to be your hope? 
for people to be by your ministry when the rapture happens they'll be there that's what it says and you remember what we read about in the last chapter verse 10 to wait for his son from heaven look how paul keeps speaking about the rapture to this church this church believes in jesus coming and he says my hope my crown is that i had took part in some of you getting saved when you take part and someone gets saved and they become a christian you are rewarded with a crown of rejoicing i got a few of those i believe for ye are our glory and joy so somebody doesn't take part of any way of ministering to the lost people they have no glory they have no joy they have no rejoicing you can't because paul said you being part of someone's work for being saved that is your glory your joy your hope and your rejoicing and what's it what's it come to to the fullest the rapture of the lord jesus christ calling his church home that's our hope that's our glory